Oh, for those folks who are new, you will not need to we uh, to wear your boots of anchoring right now. We don't need to wear those until part three. So you can go ahead and wear whatever boots you normally wear. Cool. How many parts are there? Is it part three? Three parts. Ah, uh -huh. for the final. Yeah, and it's just like, you know, as I mentioned in the post, it, the boss Horoth casts Banishment, and uh, he can send you right out of the raid, and there's no way to get back in. Well, technically... If that happened, where would you go? Where would you be banished to? He would banish you to, like, the marketplace. And you, you can actually get back in the raid, but there's that lockout point, so you couldn't get to, like, to the chests, you know, so you, you could technically still come back in and get completion, but you wouldn't get any loot. Uh, okay. well, I guess it's best to have the boot. Yeah, and so... I'm all set. Also, is, okay, cool, man, welcome back. Uh, it's good to have, uh, like, spell absorption items. Like, it, you, you can get away with, with not having the boots of anchoring if you're, I don't know what the save is, but if your saves are high enough and you never fail a save, it's a will save, then you can get away with not wearing them. Also, if, if you just wear spell absorption items, so, you know, banishment's a spell. So if you wear a spell absorption item like, um, you know, a pale lavender iron stone or, or a jeweled cloak or something like that, that can just absorb the banishment. But if you didn't have your boots of anchoring and you didn't have good saves and you didn't have a spell absorption item, basically if you get to part three, uh, then you just have to have those people like hide in the corner way far away from the boss. Alright, sorry, so sure, sure if I have the boots on, I don't need cloak on. If you have the boots of anchoring on for part three, you, you don't need to have a spell absorption item on. Although, he can still stun you. If he hits you with banishment, he can still stun you for like five seconds. But that won't be a problem, really. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and get some buffs. I have the, I have the club. And for those of you who are new, go ahead and come down to this hallway in the east. This is a little movie you can watch. And when you pull this lever, it starts it, and that's what triggers the lockout point. Jailer from Zonoscope. There are a couple named Orthons in Chronoscope, but it's not this dude. Not that one. This, however, is uh, Eritrikos, the guy who just got shrunk. That's from Shroud. And Horoth there will be fighting in part three, and the Jailer and the Judge will be fighting in part one. Bet, bet we could. Little, little from, from right there next to my. Savannah, it's you're the one that's cutting out. All right, I'll try to get better. How's that? Yeah, I think that's better. So now we're just going to uh, clear some trash on the way to part one. There's going to be some devils and some tieflings. 
Orthon, Bezakira, maybe. Troglodyte. This used to be the end game raid when the level cap was 20, but um, these days, you know, with everybody being level 28, the raid's really no big deal anymore. Although there are definitely some spots that, that groups can still, still get tripped up, you know, if you come in here and you're short manned or, you know, you get people that don't know what they're doing, there are certain parts that can still be problematic. Make sure you don't fall down this hole right here. <laughs> you want to go ahead and uh, jump down the pit. And don't worry about those spikes on the walls. They won't hurt you. Don't move once you get to the bottom of the pit. And this is going to be part one here. And once we move forward, it'll start. I just want to explain what we're going to do first. Okay. So silver and good, right? I think so. Can somebody verify that, please? Yes, silver and good. Cool, thank you. Uh, so there's the Jailer and Judge that we just saw in the little movie, and uh, th those are the two bosses that we're going to have to fight right now uh, in order to free that little mini, mini Eratricos. Yeah, mini Eratricos. We're going to end up freeing him at the end of part one here. So he's actually going to help us out. Uh -huh. So what we want to do is basically have like a one person tank the judge and one person tank the jailer. And uh, is there anybody like of the folks that are new that would like to tank either one of them? This is a good time to practice. You don't have to worry about, you know, messing up. This is uh, why we're doing this. Nobody's going to give you a hard time if you don't do it right or whatever. Well, I don't have Intimidate, but I can sure whack on one of them. I don't think my rangers tank it. Okay, no problem. I just thought I'd I'll offer. You want to do it, Teldran? Yep. Okay, um, so don't don't move yet. So what we'll do is we'll have Teldran try tanking the judge. And so when we're ready to start, you'll step forward and you'll go over and, you know, intimidate the judge or whatever, whatever start whacking on him. And I want you to take them, if you look down to the right, you'll see there's like uh, some bay doors down there. There's like a platform in front of it. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah I see it. Okay. Yeah, I want yeah. you to down there in the lava. Yeah, I want you to take the judge over there onto that platform in front of those bay doors. So it's, uh, let's see, it would be in the south. And then we're going to need another person to babysit the jailer, just to keep the jailer off the party until we get done with the judge. Okay, Elbian's going to go ahead and do that. And try not to die in this part. the judge If you die, you get sent to the penalty box, which there's just a little room that's just beyond um, the bosses there that we can't see, and it's down below. It's just out of our sight, but you get sent there and you cannot be raised until this part is over. So even if you had like a gibber's blade, it wouldn't help you because you're still stuck inside of the, the penalty box. So this is like an example of one of the points where if you came in here and you were short man and you know, a little under level or something, like you can, you could potentially wipe right here because if everybody gets sent to the penalty box, it's going to be over. There's no way to recover from that. Back when this was hard, this was the number one place anybody did watch. Hell yeah, this part and and part two is pretty bad too. <laughs> yeah, the shadows. So yeah, do do we just not want to? Do we want to fight these guys at all, or just let the tanks do their thing? Yeah, we definitely want to fight them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have um, Teldran's gonna tank the judge and take him down to the right down there, and then we're all gonna go and beat on him. And then Elbion's just going to take the Jailer and keep the Jailer off us. She could take the Jailer wherever she wants to, really, just to keep him off the party. And, you know, once the Judge dies, Elbion can bring the Jailer over to us. Now, there's also going to be some trash that spawn, too. And so we're going to need, like, one 
person to deal with the trash. There's going to be fire elementals and hellhounds. Okay, Taser, thank you. The, um, yeah, I'm not sure if it's the jailer or the judge, but one of them does like an anti gravity effect where just, they like just toss you in the air. And they toss you pretty far. They both do. They both do it? Okay. And, uh, there are spikes all over the walls, like, especially like if you look at to the left in the corner, kind of, you see a bunch of spikes on the walls and there's spinny traps. And so, if you have lower hit points and, you know, not so good at saves, those can mess you up pretty bad. I mean, it, back in the day, you know, you could, if you got thrown up in the corner and you didn't have a lot of hit points, I mean, that could kill you right then and there. But even even today, it could be a problem. I think now that everybody's got PRR, it's not going to really be an issue, but uh, if, you did, if you had low PRR and low hit points, it could still be a problem. Out of curiosity, are these traps disarmable? They are not. Now, what I like to do when I'm tanking the judge is uh, after a couple of minutes, the bay doors down there on the right will open, and there's, a, there's a, a little room there. And I like to actually go in there. Even though you're standing in the lava, you're not really taking that much fire damage. You can easily heal through it I mean, if you need healing at all. And if people are in that room fighting them there, if he throws people up, you just hit the ceiling. It's like a low ceiling in there, so you don't typically get tossed that far. So, um, Teldran, whenever you're ready, go ahead and step forward and take the judge, and then Albion, you can tank, you can take the jailer, and then everybody else, but... Okay, best to pull him from that, uh, I'm sorry, best to pull him from that right path. You're going to take him down to the right. So just, like, go grab his aggro and then jump down to the right. And so everybody else is just going to jump down to the right right now. Just follow me and stand in front of these bay doors. And if you see some trash, you can take care of that for now while the tank brings the boss over. Give Teldran a moment just to grab aggro. And you can let us know when you feel you're comfortable to let everybody else beat on the judge. And <laughs> thanks for dancing me. Different groups may have, you know, people tank the judge in different locations. This is just where I like to do it. There's no right or wrong place. Also want to make sure you have curse pots in this raid. I should have said that at the beginning. Um, the judge does curses that prevent you from being healed, so it's really important that you stay on top of your curses. Curse pots are something that you should have with you at all times, no matter where you're at on all tunes. So here's where I'm saying, like, I actually like to bring them back into this, into this room, and just kind of back into the corner as the tank. And that way, if he tosses you up, you know, you don't get tossed way across the room. It's making it lag. Yeah, it's lagging pretty bad. Albion, you can go ahead and bring the jailer, I mean the judge over. I mean the jailer. <laughs> Sweet. Just wait for Albion here, bring him over. Alright, go ahead and start beating on the jailer, the jailer folks. Can make you fly too, huh? Yep. 
See, he just tried. So, like, see how that time we got tossed up, but for those who were in the room, you just hit the ceiling of this little room and you came right back instead of getting tossed all the way across the area. Easy peasy. Just want to show the new folks that the penalty box is right here uh, in the west. Actually, I'm sorry, in the east. That, that would be it right there? Yep. And then you come up here to the top where little Eritricos is, and you just pull the lever to let him out of his little prison cell they had him in, and you talk to him, and he gives you the password to get to... Uh, <laughs> a later part. It's like he's giving the nitty. And you can go ahead and come down here uh, to the shrines and shrine out. There are a couple chests. <laughs> yeah, that's what we need is a look like a mini pit fiend. That'd be pretty cool. With the attitude, of course. That would be great. Alright, we're going to head to part two now. We're just going to fight our way through some trash. And once we get to part two, I'll explain how that works. This is actually the part, you know, where we went down the pit that was right here, but now we're coming back through and it's covered. Oh, cool. And just go up the steps here. So part two here, as we were saying earlier, is w was one of the no notorious parts for wipes because there are going to be a bunch of these like shadow creatures that are going to spawn, and uh, if they get out of hand, they can take out a party pretty quick. Not so much these days again, because you know level caps 28 and whatnot, and people have a lot of hit points, but they can sometimes still be a problem. So the way this is going to work is everybody but one person is going to go up to uh, straight ahead on top of the stairs and then the shadow master Netherios is going to spawn and you're just going to it's just a straight up beat down for everybody except for one person who is either going to tank or kite the shadows that spawn and so two different methods one is that the shadows can just be tanked at the bottom of the steps there and then tank will it's usually the caster a caster but you know you could have a range to do it too but usually you'll see like a caster put an AOE up like a firewall or something on the steps to grab the shadows aggro so that they don't go up to the party or if they try to go up to the party you know they'll immediately aggro on that caster because of that firewall and they'll just hold their aggro there and, and they do a lot of cold damage so it's great to have like a you know sp uh, spell absorption I or uh, items that can absorb cold damage like fire shield cold for example or energy sheet but another uh, method that can be used is they can just be kited around and so similarly it's great to put an AOE up on the on the steps and then that'll grab the shadows aggro if they try to go up to the party and then somebody just runs around the room. They move pretty fast so they actually move at the same speed as a hasted tune 
So if you're gonna if you're gonna kite them, you really need to have something that's like that moves that has like wings, like a favorite soul or like an air savant or uh, druid has the uh, snow slide, something like that. It's really helpful if you're gonna be kiting them. So I'm gonna go ahead. Are they devil type also? Um, their shadows, they might be undead actually. I'm not really sure. Netherios is I'm not sure if he's a pit fiend or what. Well we'll have to take a look. Maybe they're a little both like a shadow demon type of thing. We're about to find out. So uh I just want everybody to go ahead and go straight ahead and you're gonna fight Netherios at the top. He looks like a pit fiend. And then I'll just t I'll t tank the shadows at the bottom here. I'm not the best at tanking them. I tend to l sometimes let one or two by. But if they get up there, um, I'm going to have AoEs up on Ethereos. So hopefully they'll come right back down. Yep, there's those shadow things are evil outsiders, devils. I can't seem to examine them for some reason. Okay, yep, race devil. And Ethereos is also a devil. Nice DPS. So once he gets down to 70% health, the first wave of shadows disappears, and you get a bit of a lull, and then another wave appears, and that second wave of shadows just got to me. And you guys had already killed Netherial, so that was pretty awesome. But the longer this part goes on, the more shadows will spawn. You get a ton of them. There's one back there still. Do we need to be concerned about it? He should have disappeared if, if he's still moving around back there shouldn't bother us. If he follows us, we'll just beat him down. Those were cool. I've never seen those. So we're just going up and around. We're going to be right above where we just were. Don't click on the portal, please. That'll take you to part three. We do have a chest here. And there are lots of named items that can drop in the chest. But this is just the, it's just the necklaces and the belts that drop from the quests. But you usually get a bunch that drop so if here. I got, so if I got Yoko's necklace and a shard of great power, I got a pretty good... Oh, hell yeah. The folks that are new, you know, look at what's left in the chest. If there's something there you want, speak up. People will be happy to pass it to you. And if, if you're going to use the shrine, be very, very careful. It's very easy to click on the portal by mistake. If you do that, you can slash stuck to get back if you need to, like if you need to use the shrine. I just passed through my own Hey, Ginger, you don't need that torn choker. I wouldn't. Uh, this is... Who wants it? I'm Savannah. If you wouldn't mind it. There you go, buddy. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. No problem. Hey, I'd love that Ann Belsing's belt. If you're not going to use it, please. Elbion, can you pass that to Teldran, please? Awesome. Thank you so much. Last call for loot in the chest.
go ahead and put your boots of anchoring on now. Um, you're not really supposed to need to put them on until this part, the next part starts, but uh, things can get a little quirky. There are some abilities that can actually aggro the boss immediately, and um, he could potentially banish us like as soon as we get in there. So just to be safe, you should put on your boots of anchoring now. Boots of anchoring will prevent you from being hasted, just FYI. And Teldran, would you like to tank uh, the boss? Is this a trick question? No, you you uh, you wanted to tank the judge earlier, so I thought you might want to tank Koroth. Sure, why not? Like I said, it's a good time to practice, and if you know if you can't seem to hold his aggro or whatever, I'd be happy to take over. Or others can take over. It's not going to be a problem. So there's going to be a little bit of a dialogue here between Horoth and the other uh, generals up there. Or the other devil council, if you want to read that. Let me go ahead and step forward, folks. Is a lord of technology? <laughs> Territory. <laughs> lord of technology. <laughs> I don't think they have that position. Uh, so, Teldran, go ahead and step forward up by, like, the altar and just wait for Horoth there, maybe a little bit back from it, and then that'll start the dialogue to get this part started. And so what's going to happen here, folks, is that uh, after they get done talking, Horoth is going to come down, and then Teldran, I want you to take him, and I want you to back yourself into the, between the thrones on the right, if you look to the right. You see a bunch of thrones. Just go between, just position yourself between any two of those. will be fine. Gotcha. And then once he's ready, everybody else is going to be on Horoth from behind. We're going to need one person to deal with trash. Actually, I'll go ahead and deal with trash. Oh, Taser, you want to? Okay, great. And then once Horoth gets beat down to like 70% health, uh, Sulamadis, which is the same boss from uh, Vision of Destruction in the subtrain, he's going to spawn, and everybody will break off except for the tank and the trash person. Everybody else will break off and beat on Sulamadis. Head over to the throne now. Yep, just go ahead and grab the boss's aggro, and then you're going to back between the throne. And he's going to do all sorts of nasty things to you. He's going to put some dots on you and disease you and poison you. And so you should back yourself right between those thrones. Nobody should be DPSing Horoth yet. And also, for what it's worth, uh, if Anytime anybody dies in this part, Horoth will heal by like 25%. I'm not sure what the exact amount is, but it's quite a bit. So if people are continually die dying in this part, it can become uncompletable. Not so much a problem these days, but something to consider for sure. Alright, Teldran, do you think you have aggro? And the trash will just be these uh, Orthons. Also, you'll take a look around for those that are new. You're going to see some portals in the back. They can be beat down. They can be destroyed. Um, but they just come right back. There's no real value in doing it. I've only one time ever been in a group where their leader wanted us to beat them down. But um, like I said, there's no real value in, in doing it. It's just kind of a waste of time. Go ahead and start beating on Horoth. You're running Master's Blitz and you need to charge your Blitz. Oh, that's true. 
they're pretty handy for that. That's a good point. You did say we could beat on Horoth, right? Yep, start beating on Horoth, and Sully's gonna spawn any moment. When he does, he okay, so Sully's gonna spawn now. Everybody will break off of Horoth except the tank and just start beating on Sully. He's traditionally taken to the back corner, but we can just fight him wherever, it's fine. I got a tag. Whoever's got him, quick hike him around, stand still. I got four off. Just let me know when you're there. Oh yeah, you just... Sorry, sorry about that, I didn't realize I had it. Everybody can, can beat on Sully. Yeah, he's got a lot of hit points too. So some of us just got stunned, and that's from the banishment. Was that when they attempt to banish you? Yep. Stun you? Ah. And it's Horoth that's doing that. So that actually would probably be another reason to, to tank Sully back in the corner. But again, you know, these days with the level cap being 28, it's not that big of a deal. Now here, for what it's worth, beating down Sully is just an optional. You don't have to kill Sully to complete the raid. You can technically just kill Horoth, but you lose out on an extra chest. So let's make sure that we don't kill Horoth. In fact, just stop DPS on Horoth right now and wait till Sully is dead. And as soon as Sully dies, we can just unload DPS on Horoth. Cool. Alright, everybody beat on Horoth. And that is TOD. Congratulations to those who is your first completion. <laughs> Outstanding. Thank you. Oh, yeah, man. No problem. Well, I just learned something new in the game, too. What? I had the chains on me by Sully, and I popped out a wolf for him, and it knocked him off. Nice. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who um, are experienced with the raid and don't need your trophies, if you could put them up for a roll for the new folks, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I'll just my view. All right. Thanks, man. Uh, these trophies are used to upgrade the rings that come out of here. Oh, okay. And what you can do is you can actually craft, for those of you who have crafted Shroud Green Steel, you can craft a tier 2 green steel shard and put them onto the TOD rings. And for. You should go onto DDO Wiki for specific instructions, but it's basically the same as crafting a tier 2 green steel shard. And then you need 9 tr of these Shavrath trophies of war. And then you go to the tier 2 altar, and, and that's where you'd put it on there. No problem, I'll pass a couple to you. Okay, well, I'm just going to start passing these to the new folks then, since I got multiple stacks. Thanks for coming, Antisys. So, Mora's band, that's one of the rings out of here, it looks like. 